All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy. He is 35 years old over in the UK, and he shares his story about events that happened about seven years ago when he was 28. And you're going to see in this story, guys, he makes all the mistakes I pretty much tell you guys not to do. But he learns a hell of a lot through his bad experience. His bad experience where he met that gal who was damn good looking, way better looking than he was used to getting, along with his low self-confidence at the time, and rushed into things, got into a bad situation, and, well, you're going to see what happens. And this story, guys, definitely is going to back up why I tell you all the time to always watch out for red flags. Watch out for red flags, and when something isn't right, trust your gut and handle it accordingly with common sense. Not going with your emotions or listening, or listening to your you-know-what down there. Why it's so important you don't rush into things, that you take your time for your relationship, guys, to get to know your girl, to take a really good amount of time, especially if, uh, again, there's potential red flags and you see them. How you have to always walk away from bad situations that don't serve you well. These are all these things that should be common sense, but guys don't do because they have a low self-worth, low self-esteem, they... Uh, get mesmerized by a beautiful woman paying attention to them, all these types of things. And last, you're going to see, once again, in Sam Gamora 2.0 world, why you don't get involved with people that are into the alternative lifestyles if that's not your thing, because this guy's going to see that too. So quite a lot of things in the story that is definitely entertaining and smackable moments, but definitely will help you guys out, and also you'll find entertaining. And not to mention, you'll see, in the end, this guy does learn from his mistakes, and he's now a new man. And it's a little bit longer, guys, but it's a good one. <clears throat> so, jumping into it, he says, uh, Hi, SSM. I am a 35-year-old subscriber to your channel. I mean, I have discovered you some time ago. I have been RP'd about three to four years ago, and it's helped me turn around my life. So, firstly, a big thank you to you and other similar content creators, and to everyone who emails in their stories as I have today. I really wish these kinds of things were around 10 years ago, but better now than ever, and it's uh, good to see that men are standing up for themselves. Yeah, dude, I wish I had a YouTube when I was growing up, but I didn't have that. I had to learn the hard way, and I didn't have anybody telling me these things, you know. Occasionally, I'd have somebody say something to me, but I wasn't, you know, really receptive to hearing things that went against my views at the time, and I had to learn the hard way, just like you. He says, during this tale, there will be a few instances where you may be thinking something will happen or where it begins to go wrong, where it doesn't. So I will clarify when I should have noticed things go bad and been smarter. But context is important as how things got to where they did and how things went afterwards. He says, my story began about seven years ago. I was 28 from the UK. A few years prior, I'd flunked out of university due to not having enough funding to continue. Uh, having changed courses halfway through. Around this time, I had a pretty serious long-term relationship, and needless to say, I felt lost and directionless. That's never a good place for anyone to be, but especially a man. And when you feel lost, <coughs> excuse me, guys, and without direction, men tend to make very bad decisions. Uh, however, I landed on my feet a little with some modeling work that allowed me to travel the world and put some money behind me before deciding that wasn't the life for me. And I went back to the UK and started working on getting into a stable job with steady income. I made a lot of friends around the world who I kept in contact with during that time. In particular, a couple in Texas who I'm friends with to this day. Uh, they got together through meeting through me. Uh, let's call them Mark and Sarah. We, uh, met, we had a mutual friend that was the same age as me and we spoke to online, but not one, but not one that I had met in person. And for the sake of this story, let's call her Tanya. Well, let me tell you guys, I've known a few Tanyas in my life, and every single one of those gals named Tanya were trash. And in this story here, 100% true. Tanya visited Mark and Sarah a few days after I'd flown home following a trip over to the States to see them again, and saw a picture of the three of us out that night. Seeing what I looked like, as I did not share what I looked like online, and kept what socials I had to private people I met in person, she became interested with getting into a relationship with me. Something they let me know about in order to try to get us talking to see if something could work out between us. <clears throat> okay, there's a big red flag. She saw a picture of you, thought you were good looking, and immediately said, I want to get into a relationship with this guy. What the hell? Maybe how about like, okay, he's a good looking guy, 
maybe when, when, when he's in town, we could all meet up. I can see what he's like. Not get into a relationship with this guy. There's a giant red flag right there. But you're going to see she's beautiful. And that completely, uh, you know, makes him do some stupid things. Anyhow, he says here, uh, <clears throat> by this time, my days of having fun with girls around the world was done. And I was pretty much looking to settle down and have a family if I could find the right person. But it was not exactly my top priority. Let's remember this part about saying that's not his top priority and not rushing into things. So we chat one evening and she mentioned seeing my picture and thought I was hot and sent me one of herself asking what I thought of her. And yeah, she was very attractive. She knows darn well she's good looking. And of course she knew how you'd respond when she sent you her best picture of herself. It's not like she's going to send you a crappy picture of herself. After that, our conversation became more personal, explicit, and lewd. She was open with me about her past, her last relationship, ended badly and she has two kids from her ex who is not in this on the scene well right then and there that's the time to cut away that the bad situation about her her former relationship she's got two kids she's obviously young you just don't need that because this is the guy who wants to settle down one day okay and uh, we all know about the single mom's they're not all bad but the majority have the issues and stereotypes that a guy who's trying to have a easy drama free life doesn't need he says I wasn't going to judge a woman who had kids young to one guy and things didn't work out. Besides, I wasn't treating this too seriously. A friend I could have a casual fun with any time I was over that side of the Atlantic as hot as her, I was game. Well, the problem is, is that uh, a lot of guys can't handle a beautiful woman. And they say, oh, you know, she's got some issues and all that. Well, you know what? I can just break up with her at any time. The problem is guys that aren't used to that and have a low self-confidence, as this guy admitted, they get attached to these types of gals and bring all sorts of drama into their lives. And that's exactly what happens. And yeah, you want to be the nice guy. I don't want to judge her because she had kids with one guy, blah, blah, blah. Well, it is what it is. And you're going to see here, the stereotype definitely matches up. It says, my job at the time paid well, and I was getting a ton of good bonuses on the side. So I had enough money to take a trip over to the States to visit a few friends later that year. So I let her know I was coming over and she was excited. I had initially planned to spend a few days with her and her folks in Oklahoma before catching a flight to Texas to spend time with Mark and Sarah after seeing other friends on that trip. About a week before, she had some issues at home and she was looking to move out. Issues, huh? Okay, here we go. Uh, Mark and Sarah offered to let her live with them. Rather than cancel my flight there and head straight to Texas, she offered to pick me up from the uh, airport and we just drive straight down with her stuff. Staying at a friend's house for a few days to wait for me so I can cancel my flight from Oklahoma to Texas, get picked up at Oklahoma Airport, and we take the long drive down to Central Texas. And we have a nice long talk for the first time in person. So this is the first time he meets this girl in person, guys. I want to make that clear. He's been talking to her a long time, thinks she's hot, because, again, based on the pictures she sends to him. And remember, guys, yeah, you can chit-chat with someone and get to know him a little bit, through online, but you can't really get to know somebody until you meet them in person and spend a lot of time with them. So these people that talk to somebody, they just meet online, think they have this amazing connection. That's bullshit. You gotta be around somebody for a long time. But this guy doesn't know any better. He says here, uh, her kids were staying with her parents until she had a stable place to live and got a job so the kids could move in with her, which I thought was reasonable and made sense. Now, despite having done modeling work for a while and having fairly good luck with the ladies while abroad in the time, which I put mostly down to my British accent and above average looks, he says I'd give myself a 6, maybe a 7 back then. I was not that confident in myself, so I did not know what it was that she saw in me, looks-wise. And uh, looks-wise, she was about an 8 at minimum and was just happy that this stunning young woman wanted to be with me. So there you go. He has low self-confidence. He's wondering why this stunning woman would want to be with him. That's a problem. He's already putting her on the pedestal. And what happens when guys with uh, low self-confidence put a woman on a pedestal? All sorts of problems. It says, During the long drive down, we talk and talk, and I start feeling that she could be the one. This felt right. We know each other for a few years at this point, just about how quickly this all came about, and didn't feel like anything was wrong. Our mutual friends were ecstatic. We could end up married. Smack. The one. There's no such thing as the one. That's a bunch of movie bullshit, okay? And you, you, you're you meeting her for the first time in person, dude, okay? This is crap you see in the movies. We talk 
you know, we, we're pen pals, essentially. We meet in person. It's all magical, and the stars align. It's bullshit, okay? But this guy, like so many others, has to learn the hard way. Don't be like this, guys. Oh, boy. He says here... He says, um, they were ecstatic. I could move over there. Mark works at a fairly large industrial company and could get me a job there without any issues whatsoever once the right visas were in place. Everything seems set, almost destined. Smack. Cut the destiny crap out, dude. Uh, for the two weeks I'm there, with the three of them, things are great. One night while we're all at the place having a few drinks, Sarah and Mark mentioned to Tanya that they were all poly. Uh-oh, here we go. Polyamorous lifestyle, open marriage, open relationships. For a guy that has low self-confidence, a guy that's not into the lifestyle. Gee, what could go wrong? I knew this about them already. It works for Sarah and Mark. He's happy if she's happy, and he gets enough tail to keep him satisfied. But they treat one another as their main priority. Sarah had expressed interest in me due to our history. He says, I won't get into that now. Mark had no interest in Tanya, though, despite her having a clear interest in him. I'll skip the details, but fun ensues. Mark sticks to Sarah. Tanya and Sarah, Tanya and Sarah do things to one another, and both with me. End of the night, and Tanya returns to our room. Dude, yeah, you were having fun in the short term, but this Tanya chick is not someone to have relations with. And this couple that you hang out with in Texas, it's just a, it doesn't matter if they're poly. Let them be poly with other people, but they're your friends, and now you're hooking up with this dude you claim's wife. I don't care if he's cool with it. I don't care if she's cool with it. It just brings problems, and you're going to see this. Psalm and Gomorrah 2.0, guys. Anyhow, he says, as you can probably imagine, I feel like I struck gold. I got myself a hot girl, a great buddy to go out with drinks with, and his woman, who was fine with her sleeping with me while he was busy working to look after his needs, her needs for him. The next day, me and Tanya are in the city and walk by a jewelry, jewelry store, and she sees a ring that she likes. Nothing extravagant or even that costly for me at the time. She says that's what she'd like when we do get engaged. When was there any talk about you guys getting engaged? She knows you're hot for her. She knows that you're susceptible, that you can easily be swayed. Being impatient and wanting everything to happen sooner rather than later, I make one of the biggest mistakes of my life. And I take her inside and try it on and buy it right on the spot. Smack! Didn't you just meet her the other day? For the first time in person the other day? And now you're buying her an engagement ring because you feel like she's magical. And she could be the one and the stars are aligned. You're out of your damn mind, brother. And I know you know this now, but looking back, good lord. You see, guys, what I'm talking about? You may hear stories that guys do this type of stuff, but they do. This, this bullshit you see in the movies. A few days later, I'm due to fly home. My holiday leave was over, and I was gonna. Uh, it was time I'd get back to work. Around that time, Mark's brother is going through a divorce and ends up moving in with them. So Mark mentions that Tanya once had a crush on the guy, but nothing happened due to him being married. Trusting her, let's pay attention to the trusting her part, and with no idea, even if one or both of them had had the idea to do something, with Mark and Sarah there, nothing would happen. She wouldn't jeopardize everything we had talked about having for a fling, right? Wrong. So, the, the, the guy's brother just got divorced. He's moving in with them. Your fiancé, who's living on the other side of the country, is all alone with this guy she used to like. And she's into the poly lifestyle. What could go wrong? And divorced and with two kids at a young age. I'm sure you all can see where this is going here. So I'm back home, and soon after I leave, leave so soon after I end up leaving my first job and find a new one. Higher base wage, less stressful work, set hours, but no bonus. She is living at theirs and jobless. Wanting to help out with the financial burden, I start sending Tanya about a fifth of my wages after taxes each month to help with food and expenses. Smack! You're giving her a fifth of your income after taxes to this girl you barely know and just got engaged if you're just meeting. You're, I mean, you're just screaming, take advantage of me. You might as well put a big sign on yourself in big red letters say, take advantage of me. I'm a sucker. And, and I, I mean, bro, I, I don't mean to be a jerk, but you need to hear this. And this, I got to make this clear so other guys don't make this mistake. I really hope her body was worth it. I really hope she was that good in the sack. But guess what? 
at the end of the day, you can save tons of money just pay for it. And you know what I mean. It says, um, in hindsight, if I was going to do this at all, I shouldn't have sent it to uh, Mark more on this later. For the first two months, nothing had changed. We texted daily and voice chat every evening for me. Six hour time difference. The third month, But the third month, however, I noticed that things began to change. Mark was busy with work as usual, so he was not at home often except on weekends, some, sometimes even staying at work overnight and not being home for the few, first few nights at a time. So whenever we got to have free time at this time, we usually just gamed. Sarah, who was, who was equally talkative with, uh, with Estonia, began to be a bit hesitant about talking about anything going over, over there. And however, Tanya's replies began to get more and more infrequent, and voice calls went from a daily thing to once every few days. So, things are changing. And by the way, guys, this guy has a lot of run-on sentences. Okay, so I'm doing my best to make this sound a lot better. So, by the way, guys, when you send me your stories, please use good punctuation. No run-on sentences that look take up a whole half a page. Okay, I had to say that. Because you probably, guys are probably wondering why I'm reading this a little weird. Uh... Eventually, Tanya's replies became, became more infrequent, and voice calls went from daily thing to once every few days. Eventually, Sarah said that, that we have to have a talk with Tanya, because something is going on. But she expressly forbidden her and Mark about talking about it behind her back. Before I even send the message, I know exactly what is going on. Oh, do you, brother? Again, this is the woman, or the subject about the woman who you thought it was destiny. And magical. So magical that he got engaged with after knowing her a few days. Yep, she and Mark's brother have been getting close. Shocker. She says nothing has happened, sure, and had been trying to figure out how to approach the subject with me. She wants to have an open relationship because of the distance. I'm not there to satisfy her needs, and Mark won't. So she wants his brother too, and that I'd be free to do the same thing over here. So, what a great deal. You, you bought her an expensive ring, you're sending her one-fifth of your after-tax income, and you're barely apart a few months, and all of a sudden she wants to have an open relationship. What a great deal for her. You can fund her lifestyle over there, and she probably has another guy that's funding her lifestyle too, and she can hook up as often as she wants. Isn't it amazing the crap these good-looking gals can pull off from these suckers? But at the end of the day, they're the a-holes that do, this to, do these things to the guys, but the guys are a-holes for allowing it. It's amazing. <clears throat> it says here, uh, I'm out there to satisfy her needs, and Mark won't, so she wants his brother too, blah, blah, blah. He said, I was pretty much past the point of random hookups, and there were no friends who I, who I could be that be like that with. I should have called off then and, and there and cut my losses, but I wanted to make this work. I wanted that future that we talked about and experienced while I was over there. So I agreed on two conditions, that uh, I was the priority and not him, and do not get pregnant or it was over. Smack. You think she's going to agree to either one of those things? And by the way, just again, you wanted the future you talked about. She was telling you what you wanted to hear. Or maybe she felt it in that moment, as a lot of gals do. But come on here, man. Have some self-respect. But guys got to learn the hard way. He says, she agreed to those terms and communication became almost normal again. Tanya would get back to me almost instantly with messages, video calls, and frequent again, and frequent again with Sarah. And while still sketchy about talking about anything to do with Tanya, was her old self again when it came to anything else. I tried one or two one-night stands, but felt nothing. It just didn't do anything for me anymore. So I just gave up on having my fun and concentrated on working, putting money away, and sending some over to her to help pay, with the, pay the bills and some for herself. You are a sucker, brother, or at least the old you was a sucker. Thank God you learned your, your lesson now. He says here, uh, Another two months of this goes by, and Sarah calls me as I'm getting ready for, for bed on a work day, which was highly unusual. She tells me that as, much that as much trouble and headache she's going through to get Tanya for this, there's something that Tanya needs to tell me and expect to call soon. If not, she will call to talk to me about something that's happened. I'm thinking, oh God, what's it this time? I'd be like, cut the crap, just tell me what's going on. An hour later, Tanya calls me, acting sheepish and hesitant to speak at first. Then she drops the bombshell on me. She's pregnant. Gee, you never could have saw that coming, huh? 
It was harmless fun, she said. We took all precautions. I didn't mean to hurt or lie to you. She still wants to make things work with us, but she's going to keep the baby. That was non-negotiable. Of course she wants to keep things working with you because you'll keep sending her a paycheck every month. And meanwhile, she can have someone else's kid, her third child. Remember in the beginning I said this girl's trouble? Remember I said, uh, you know, she's got the two kids and, and, and divorced that young. But he's like, I didn't want to judge her. I didn't want to judge her. Well, there you go. It says here, uh, now bear in mind, she and Mark's brother don't have a job at this point. What a great, what great people to hang out with. Mark is keeping a roof over their head and they've been having their fun with. And Sarah has been there, has been a gaslit to not say anything and was getting more miserable day by day. And I'm helping out financially, or so I thought. So without us, they're screwed. I could have just believed her words, got strung along until she cut me off again, or I stupidly went along with marrying her, moving over there, and then becoming the, got, the gotten cucked because I'd end up being deported if we got divorced. If I didn't have a green card and become a citizen by then, I'd be stuck working to support her while she slept with whoever helping raise another man's baby. Translation, get out of this shitty situation, brother. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't put myself through that misery. Put myself in a position where she had so much control over me. To have to explain to the child that I was not the father despite her being born while their mommy was engaged to me. Despite my low self-esteem at that point, I knew I was better than that, worth more than that, and I wasn't going to let myself go through that. I put my foot down and told her it was over and she was getting no more money from me. Thank the Lord, brother. Look at all the shit he had to go through, guys, to finally stand his ground and stand up for himself. All evening, she blew up my phone with messages trying to get me to reconsider. Yeah, please send me money. Please send me money. I'll do anything. When it was clear that we wouldn't work, she cussed me out for, wait for it, not being a real man. I ended up blocking her when I woke up the next morning after reading through everything. You're not being a real man because you're not going to pay for her lifestyle. She's effing somebody else. You never see her. I mean, think about it. how many days were you actually around with her, let alone how many days were you apart sending her money. But a weaker guy actually would have gone along with this. So thank God you had came to your senses. A month later, she moves out of Mark and Sarah's place. Turns out they were not getting any of the money I had been sending her to give at least half to them, and saying I wasn't sending her anything for them. She's been leeching off all of us, along with them, dis with them disapproving of how she treated me, and with how, s how tense the home situation was now, they want her out as soon as possible. She ended up moving up north, I don't know where, I didn't want to know where, I don't, didn't want to know anything about her again. She's not your problem. And you know what? She'll just find some other sucker to rope in with her body and her looks. And then he'll pay for her lifestyle. And she'll have a fourth child. He says, it took a long time for the rest of us to move past that. We were finally able to speak openly about things and put, the, put to rest any of the stuff she had said about me to them. My friendship with Mark was not affected as he tended to stay out of most things. Because of the gaslighting, Tanya had, had put Sarah through about all she could and couldn't say... Uh, and it took us a while to get back to where we were friends. I then got to talk with Mark's brother. She had downplayed the seriousness of our relationship to him, and they'd been having fun before I confronted her about it. Apparently, she forbade him from talking to me about anything or it was over between them. Wow, she is something. What I tell you about those girls named Tanya? She played us both for fools, but at least I'm not the one on the hook for child support. On my next trip, which was not for another three years, I met up with the three of them. He is still living at his brother's house to this day, but is working at the same company as Mark. Good Lord, get a fucking life. He's working at a, at a company as a job. Get your own freaking place. These people are way too nice with letting people come move in with them. Good Lord. It says here, uh, me and Mark are still cool as ever. Nothing really changed there. Me and Sarah are close friends again, but even the, the, the even though the offer for fun was there, I just didn't take her up, up on it. Good. Don't get involved with that crazy lifestyle. I don't want to jeopardize anything more, and she's fine with that. As for Mark's brother, we chatted, and I ended up thanking him for saving me from Tanya. If she had played along with the act longer and got involved with him, uh, would, uh, would, she have, would she let me marry her and then pull this with someone else? when I was le less able to walk away. Quite likely. We're not exactly friends, but we're cool with one another. He says, It took me a long time to move on from that. My trust in women was almost completely shattered. I saw no point in it. Thankfully, I've managed to move past that dark period in my life. 
Well, that's great, brother. Don't ever make these boneheaded mistakes ever again. I am now with a good-looking younger woman, another friend I've known since my modeling days. She was a teenager at the time who I saw as, as a little sister, and she'd always had a crush on me. When it comes to relationships, she's very traditional, shy, submissive, yet assertive when she needs to be. I'm due to fly over to spend Christmas with her and her family. I've spoken to her parents, who are over the moon, that we are together, because she's talked about me to them for years, and they're happy to see that their daughter is happy and settling down with a man she adores, her first love and first choice. Well, that can be good and bad, but uh, hopefully it works out. But again, you said you're going to go fly see her. So is this another long-distance relationship you're in, bro? I wish you all the best, but good Lord, enough with the long-distance relationships. I hope you don't get burned again. He says, anyway, I just want to share my tale with you and your viewers. To anyone listening, I can only echo what others have said and been going through similar things. Trust your gut. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Exactly. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. And do not be afraid to walk away and go it alone. It may take some time, in my case almost five years, but believe me, I'm better off getting through my, that struggle and coming out on the other end with rebuilt pride in myself and dignity intact. And then becoming a literal and financial cuck to gaslighting emotionally abusive woman who did not treat me with the same respect and love that I gave her. You are all worth more than that. Thanks for taking the time to read my story, man. Keep up the good work. Regards. Well, bro, that was quite a story. And I didn't know quite how to label it in the beginning, but because this was just nuts. But guys, as you can see here, you pay attention to the red flags. You trust your gut. You don't rush into anything. Don't get into these online relationships with these women that you never met in person. Meet them for a freaking day and think that the, the stars are aligned. It's destiny. That's nuts, okay? You got to spend years with someone in person, getting to know them before you even consider getting engaged, which I don't recommend, but people are going to do it anyway. This guy did it in a few days. Smack. But I'm sure his head is sore now from all the smacks, but hopefully this guy learns from his mistakes. And also, this girl you're with, who you said you're engaged to, I think you said you're engaged to, she's long distance, be careful. Take your time, okay? I don't know why you can't meet a girl in your own town in England. I mean, I know that a lot of women, and in, in, uh, I know a lot of British women look like horses, but I'm sure there's some good looking ones out there. But is what it is. I wish you the best of that, but learn from your mistakes. So guys, lots of things to learn from this story here, like I said before, but it's an entertaining one. And dude, those friends of yours out in Texas, like I'm glad you didn't get involved, back involved in that poly lifestyle. Guys, no less than the stories. Don't involve yourself with people like that. If you have friends, people that you like hanging out with and find that they're into that lifestyle and open the bedroom up, up to you, don't get involved. It's not worth it. Find another chick. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.